Hi guys, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to assemble this Chinese lantern for the Lunar New Year. Part of the Chinese New Year custom is to decorate your house with red and gold. In mythology it was believed that red scared away the Nian dragon, which was a vicious lion-like dragon that attacked people. Nowadays, Chinese families continue the tradition believing that it'll bring you good fortune. I call this a lantern because it hangs like traditional Chinese lanterns, but it's not ideal for actually placing a light into. Here I've left the cutouts of this lantern open and I've placed a tea light inside, but placing a light inside was never my original intention, so doing so is a little bit of a pain because the top is taped shut like you see here and then further closed with the hanging string. I mean, you could do this if you wanted to, but it would be cumbersome to access your tea lights to turn them off and on. So included in this design is a second version that is a tea light holder, and rather than hanging, it sits on your table. I think it would be quite nice to have your hanging lanterns match your table lanterns, so I hope you guys like them both. First, I'll show you how to assemble the hanging lantern, and then I'll show you the table lantern. So let's start with going over the folders in your download and what you can expect in the files. Once you unzip your download, you should see two folders inside the main lantern folder. One for the hanging lantern and one for the tea light holder. Now if you look inside your lantern folder, you should see two folders. One for a small lantern and one for a large lantern. Here I'm showing you the small lantern template. The small lantern, which you see here, can be cut on one 8.5 by 11 letter size paper. I cut mine in 60 pound cardstock paper. The finished size of this lantern is about 2 inches tall, and that's just the box part of the lantern. Here my lantern template is in outline form, but I know in Design Space when you import the SVG file, the template becomes a solid color, which doesn't affect the outcome at all. But one important thing I mention with all of my designs is that the dotted lines you see here in red will probably show up as solid lines if you're using design space. Make sure to change these lines back to dotted lines or score lines as they're called in design space. The way you do that is to click on the template and first find the ungroup button and ungroup everything. Then you should be able to click on the fold lines and change them from cut lines to score lines. If you don't do this, those lines will cut as one solid line and you won't be able to assemble your lantern. Also, you probably notice that I have paper tassels hanging off my lantern, which are included in this template. Traditional Chinese lanterns have red or gold string or tassels hanging from their lanterns, but I wanted to simplify mine, so I designed these tassels and made them out of paper. Of course, you're welcome to replace them with string tassels if you have them. You can use the same hole to hang them that I use for the paper tassels. Now let's take a look at the template for the large lantern. You will find this file in the lantern folder under the large lantern folder. This is the one I'll be showing you in this tutorial because unlike the small lantern, this one is separated into panels. And I did this so you can have more control over how large or small you want your lantern to be. You'll see that once you get past a certain point in assembling this large lantern, it'll be the same assembly for a small lantern and I'll bring that up again later. The box of this large lantern, if you cut it in the size I've set it to, is about five and a half inches tall. Remember, if you want to change its size, to change all the pieces together. Each of the panels for this large lantern should fit on eight and a half by eleven size letter paper. And finally, let's look at the template for the tea light holder. This file can be found in the tea light holder folder. This template is basically the lantern template but with the top panels cut off and you'll see later that the tassels will be attached a little bit differently. Alright, that's it for file review. Let's start assembling our lantern. Here are the materials you'll need for this project. I will link some of these items in the description below. To start, you need to cut two of these panels with the holes at the top for hanging string and two of these panels with the rectangular slit at the top. You'll also need four of these plain rectangular pieces. These will be the color behind the floral cutouts in your lantern. 
You'll also need one bottom panel, which is this piece here. For your tassels, you have the tassels themselves and then this separate piece that is supposed to mimic string. You'll need five string pieces and five tassels. And the first thing to do is to fold your string pieces into the lengths we need them to be. Take one piece and starting at one end, count six circles in. Then fold between the sixth and the seventh circle. Now jump to the other side of that seventh circle and fold again in the same direction. And you should end up with this hairpin fold. Then starting on the opposite end, count six circles in and fold again, but this time fold in the opposite direction of your hairpin fold. So you should end up with a Z shape. Repeat this for all your string pieces. Next, we need to add double-sided tape to each panel. I'm using double-sided tape with lining on it, which I'll link below. Cut out a piece that's about the same length as the bottom flap of one of your side panels. My tape is over a half inch wide, which is too wide, so I'm cutting it in half. Place your tape along the bottom flap and make sure it's below the dotted fold line. Continue placing tape along the bottom flaps of all four side panels. Now with the tape visible, fold all four bottom flaps upwards. All four of your bottom flaps should be folded the same way with the tape on the same side. And finally, we can begin assembling the body of the lantern. Keep track of which panels you're working with here because we want twin panels to be opposite each other on the lantern. Remove the lining on your tape, enhance that fold on the bottom flap, and attach the rectangular bottom panel. Make sure the rectangle is aligned with the side panel. They should be the exact same width. And push that bottom panel right up to the fold line. Now take the twin side panel and attach it to the opposite side of the rectangle. Repeat the same steps with the remaining two panels. And now you have a template that's the exact same as the small lantern template. If you're making the small lantern, you would start at this point. With the large lantern, flip it over to the side with the flaps on the bottom panel. If you're making the small lantern, you can do this step on any side. Now fold all the side panels up towards you. Then flip your lantern over again and fold the top flaps upwards towards the center of the lantern. Fold the hanging notch in the opposite direction. Your top panels and side panels should be folded in opposite directions. Now let me give you a quick preview of how the panels will come together. We'll be taping the side panels together like this. So cut a piece of double-sided tape and eyeball it so that it'll fit along the center of that side flap. It doesn't need to cover the entire flap. Now work your way around the lantern, placing tape on every other flap. The next step is to glue on the color panels. You can skip this step if you want the cherry blossom cutouts to stay uncovered. Squeeze a small amount of glue into a small bowl. Then with a small paintbrush, brush a thin line of glue along all the edges of your rectangle. Make sure you're working on the colored side. Then flip it over and press it onto one of your panels. Try to center it on the panel. 
Repeat this step until all four panels are covered. Now place some double sided tape on one of the top panels with the rectangular slit. You'll need two pieces of tape that will sit on each side of the slit. Before we assemble the body of the lantern, we need to attach the string piece for the bottom tassel since we'll be taping the lantern shut. Here's what that bottom tassel looks like on a finished lantern. So take one of your previously folded string pieces and working with the hairpin fold side, take your string piece and loop it through those two holes on the bottom panel. The hairpin fold of the string piece should hang perfectly between the two holes. And this is what it'll look like under your lantern. Now with your lantern flipped over, place a small amount of glue on the last two circles of the shorter end of the string piece. Then press the two string pieces together. The pieces will want to separate while the glue is drying, so just come back to it every few seconds to make sure they're still pressed together. If you're making the small lantern, it might be a little tricky to work with the small string pieces. One thing to take note of is when you glue the string together, make sure that hairpin fold is at a right angle and not at an angle like this. Keep in mind, these little details are not going to make or break your lantern. This is just to give it a nice, neater look. Now we can assemble the lantern body. Start by removing the lining from one of the side flaps. Then fold it and the flap beside it backwards to enhance their folds. Now bring those two panels upwards and match up their corners. Press the two side flaps together, making sure that they're nicely aligned. Repeat this with the other three corners. Now that the body is made, let me show you how the lantern will close. First, let's enhance those folds of the top flaps. Now pull the panels with the hanging notch together. Then pull down the flap that doesn't have the tape over them. Now remove the lining on your tape on the remaining flap and then pull it down over the hanging notches. Try to align that rectangular slit of both panels. Secure this top part by pulling on the two hanging notches and then pressing down on the two areas where you have the tape. And now the body of the lantern is done so we can move on to attaching our tassels. Here's the finished lantern again. We're going to be attaching the tassels to that outer smaller hole. So take one string piece and working with the hairpin fold end, loop it through the hole. And now just like the piece we attached to the bottom of the lantern, place small amount of glue on the last two circles of the shorter end. Remember to keep that hairpin fold at a right angle and if you do that, the circles on both pieces should line up nicely. Now repeat with the remaining three strings. And remember to keep going back and checking on your previously glued strings to make sure that they're not coming apart.
And finally, the last step is to attach our tassels. Let's start with the bottom tassel first. Take one tassel and loop the string piece through that top small hole at the top of the tassel. And your tassel will sit in that fold that we made previously. Now again, place a small amount of glue on the last two circles and press it up to meet the other side. Try not to press too much on the fold on the ends because we want the tassel to hang freely. And now repeat with the remaining four tassels. Again, make sure to keep going back to the strings that you've glued to make sure that glue is still holding together. And your lantern is done. Now let's tie some string to our lantern so we can hang it up. I'm using white twine with a little bit of pretty gold braided through it. Now loop your string through that top hole. And if you already have some sort of hook set up where you want to hang this lantern for them, you can make a knot like I'm doing here, and then you'll simply have a loop to hang onto a hook. Or you can just tie a single long string to that hole and then hang it by taping the string to the ceiling. And that's it guys, we have a beautiful lantern. Now let me show you how to create the tea light holder. So here is the cut template for the tea light holder. And as you can see, it's very similar to the hanging lantern. Sorry about the glaring sun, I hope you can still see this clearly. So just like the hanging lantern, we're gonna begin by folding up those side panels. Then flip it over and fold up the side flaps of each panel. And now flip it back over again and flatten out those side flaps a little bit and we're going to be placing tape on every other side flap. Now I'm just noticing here that those two little rectangular holes on the bottom panel um, are cut out and you actually won't have that in your template. Those have been removed and we won't be needing them. So like your hanging lantern, cut out a thin piece of double sided tape and place it along one side flap. And just like your hanging lantern, do this with every other flap. And now to assemble those panels together, remove your tape, pull up two panels and line up their corners. You might want to enhance those folds again. Line up the corners and then line up the two side flaps and press them together. And again, repeat with the remaining three corners. And now let's attach our tassels. You'll only need a tiny amount of glue for this. I would say smaller than your pinky nail. So pick a corner and open up the two side flaps. And then you're going to be placing glue on the bottom edge of the smaller hole. 
and I only place glue on one side here but um, for yours you can put glue on both flaps and then you're going to take a tassel and place it place the top part of that tassel where you place the glue and then just adjust your tassel to make sure that it's hanging nice and straight vertically and repeat this with the other three corners And that's it, your tea light holder is done. Now just place a flameless tea light inside and enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed these two projects. If you'd like to see future projects from me, please subscribe to my channel or you can follow me on Instagram and Pinterest at Chive Design, which I will post at the end of this video. Thanks guys.